Hello. Welcome to EasyVB, Tips and Tricks 6. In this video, we will provide an introduction to, SAPI, Text to Speech. This is a useful facility that may be used in many ways for applications, to speak to the user, or to allow the user to write text which is then spoken. SAPI, is the abbreviation for Speech Application Programming Interface, or Speech API, which is packaged with Windows and can be accessed with Visual Basic Code. Before we go on to explain in detail, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and even comment, in support of the channel. Thank you. Ok. To explain SAPI, what we will do in this video is create a very simple text-to-speech application using some of the SAPI code commands. Create a Windows Forms application. Place a button on the form, and change its name to, BTN Speak. Change its text to, Speak, and make the text font size 16, so that we can see it clearly. Add a text box to the form, and set its font size to 16 also. Change its name to TB1, and set its multi-line property to, true. Stretch out the picture box to a larger size. Double click on the form to create a form one load event. Later we will write some code in the event. Declare a variable, dim, sarpy as object, equals, create object, brackets, quotes, sarpy.sp voice. Note, we have called the declared object sarpy, just for convenience and recognition, but we could call it any variable name. Go to the designer view, and double click on button speak to create a click event handler. Within the click event write, sarpy.speak, brackets, tb1.txt. Run the application. Write some text in the text box and then click the button speak. We will test if the application will speak this text. We will test if the application will speak this text. So it works. Note that, the voice speaking is the Windows default voice, Microsoft David. There is also another voice supplied, as standard, with Windows, which is the female voice, Microsoft Zira, and you may also have other software package voices installed on your PC. For the purposes of this video demonstration we will continue just to use the default voice. Ok, let's add a few more controls. Add a track bar. Change its name to T-Bar, Rate. Change its minimum value to minus 10. Add a label for the track bar. Change its name to LB Rate. Change its text to Rate and its font to 16, then position it below the Rate track bar. Double click on the track bar to create a track bar scroll event handler. Within the event handler write the code. sarpy.rate equals tbar rate.value. In the form one load event, write the code. tbar rate.value equals zero. Run the application. Write some text to the text box and click the speak button. We will use the trackbar to increase and decrease the rate at which text-to-speech is spoken. 
Move the pointer on the rate track bar towards the right, and click the speak button again. We will use the track bar to increase and decrease the rate at which text to speech is spoken. Now move the pointer on the rate track bar towards the left, and click the speak button once more. We will use the track bar to increase and decrease the rate at which text to speech is spoken. Close the application. SARPI.RATE controls the rate at which the text is spoken. Rate can have any integer values from minus 10, very slow, to plus 10, very fast, with 0 being the normal rate. Add one more track bar, and this time call it T-Bar Volume. Set its maximum value to 100 and keep its minimum value at 0. Double click on the track bar to create a track bar scroll event handler. Within the event handler write the code. SAPI.volume equals tbar volume dot value. In the form one load event, write the code. tbar volume dot value equals 70. Also, to initiate the volume to 70, write the code. SAPI.volume equals 70. Run the application. Write some text to the text box and click the speak button. We will use the volume track bar to increase or decrease the audio volume of the text to speech spoken text. Move the pointer on the volume track bar towards the right and click the speak button again. We will use the volume track bar to increase or decrease the audio volume of the text to speech spoken text. Now move the pointer on the volume track bar towards the left and click the speak button once more. We will use the volume track bar to increase or decrease the audio volume of the text to speech spoken text. Close the application. SARPI.volume controls the volume at which the text is spoken. Volume can have any integer values from 0, quietest, to 100, loudest. Run the application again. Write some text to the text box, and click the speak button. While the text-to-speech voice is speaking, attempt to change the rate or volume. An experiment. Can we change the rate or volume while the text-to-speech stream is speaking? You will find that you cannot change the rate or volume while the SAPI voice stream is speaking. The reason for this is that the audio play mode is, by default, wait to complete, and this does not allow asynchronous code execution. That is, we cannot operate any other feature of the application while the speech stream is in progress. But we can fix this quite easily. Close the application, and in the line SAPI.speak, TB1 text, add, comma, audio play mode dot background. Run the application again, write some text, and try again to change the rate and volume while the text-to-speech voice is speaking. We will use this text as a test. We will test if we can now move the rate and volume track bars while the text stream is running. We will first test the volume. Then we will test the rate. The volume should adjust at the boundary of each word. The rate should adjust at the boundary of each sentence. We will use this text as a test. We will test if we can now move the rate and volume track bars while the text stream is running. We will first test the volume. Then we will test the rate. The volume should adjust at the boundary of each word. 
the rate should adjust at the boundary of each sentence. It works. Setting the audio play mode to background allows asynchronous execution of the code, meaning we can move track bar pointers, click buttons, and execute other operations while the speech stream is running. Note though, the changes to speech rate are only invoked at the boundary of completed sentences. But, changes to volume are invoked more frequently, at the boundary of each word. OK. Let's add a few more functions. Copy the speak button and create two new buttons. Change their names and text to, pause, and, resume. Double click on each to create a click event handler. In the click event handler for the pause button, write the code, sarpy.pause. And in the click event handler for the resume button, write the code, sarpy.resume. Run the application. Write some text to the text box, and click the button speak. Try clicking pause and resume while the speech stream is running. We will use this text to test if we can pause and resume the text to speech text stream while it is being spoken. With these additional functions our quick application is now looking quite useful. It works. We can pause and resume the speaking text, and this is invoked at the boundary of each word. Close the application, and let's try one further experiment with some code adjustment. So far, we have only demonstrated speaking from text entered in the text box. However, we can speak text from any string, including strings pre-written in the code. Try this. Declare a string variable and Call it speak this, and initiate it with a string value, some written text. In the sarpy.speak line, replace tb1.text with the variable speak this. Run the application and click the button Speak. Don't worry, we are nearly completed with this video. OK. That took just a few minutes and lines of code, and we already have the beginning of quite a useful text-to-speech application, as well as an understanding of how to provide applications with voice messages. There is a bit more to learn on SAPI, but we will cover that in the next Tips and Tricks video. Specifically, in Tips and Tricks 7, we will explain how you can show a list of your PC installed voices, and select a preferred voice from the available list. Thanks for watching. We hope this tip and trick was useful. If it helped you, please like, share, and subscribe.